It's uh, great to hear such an excited uh, hubbub at the start of a, a conference. I think it's a, a very good sign for the uh, dialogue and energetic debate we're going to have over the next few days. Good morning to everyone. Uh, my name is Sarah Turner. Um, I'm the Deputy Director for Research at the Paul Mellon Centre for Studies in British Art. And it gives me great pleasure to welcome you to this event on behalf of the Paul Mellon Centre, but also on behalf of my co-organisers for this series of events across the next few days. And I'm just going to introduce them to you now. I'm sure you'll know many of them, but I'd like them to just give you a little wave so you can see who they are. So Devika Singh, Sasha at the front here, Sunal Kula, um, Hamad Nassar and Nada Raza. I can't see where Nada is. There we go. <laughs> um, I've, I've worn a good colour here too, so you all can see me. If you have any questions, do pick me out in my red coat and, and come and find me and I'll, I'll help you in any way that I can. The organisers are based across three different continents and many of you will sympathise with the challenges um, of coordinating work and life across time zones. But despite our physical distance, our co collaboration has been a close and convivial one throughout. And I want to give them my heartfelt thanks right at the start of this event for all their time, energy and advice. Talking of time and energy, all of you will have been in contact with our indefatigable events manager, Ella. Ella, are you here? There she is. <laughs> so yeah, thank you. This event would not have been possible without her, and the organisers are extremely grateful for her efficiency, patience and kindness. I'm sure, well, you've already, but thank you, Ella, and to all the other staff at the Paul Mellon Centre. We have Harriet and Nermin here with us, and May Soon, um, for helping with all the organisation um, across uh, this event. Many of you have travelled a very long way to be with us. Thank you to you all for coming and giving so much of your time to be here with us. We are truly very grateful to all our speakers, respondents, chairs, panellists and delegates. It's wonderful to have so many people express an interest in this event and it is an indication, I think, of the timeliness and importance of these conversations, especially as we reflect on the recent geopolitics of the UK. Just a word about housekeeping and locations before we get into discussing the main focus of um, the proceedings. We had originally planned for this to be quite a small scale symposium to take place in the Paul Mellon Centre in Bedford Square. We've re recently completed a renovation project and have a lecture room for 60 people in the building. However, it became apparent that demand for tickets far exceeded the supply we could provide. So we scrambled to find some alternative venues so we could fit as many people in to participate in these discussions. It's not an easy task to find extra rooms in London in the early summer season with so much going on. But I want to thank the Trade Union Congress Centre mm -hmm. for providing this room for this morning's uh, conversation. This afternoon, and um, for all of Friday, we'll be uh, based at One Alfred Place, which is just behind Bedford Square on the north side. And in your conference packs, there are maps showing you how to get to the various locations. And the walks are about you know, roughly five minutes away from each place. Um, this afternoon um, at One Alfred Place, I'm just giving you a warning so you, you know what to expect. We've squeezed in as many people as possible. So it's going to be intimate, but hopefully again, this will encourage dialogue and discussion amongst us all. Um, and I hope you're going to enjoy, actually, this experience of roaming around Bloomsbury and Bedford Square. And it will make the experience a memorable one um, and energise you in between all the panels. And again, please do ask any of us if you feel lost or don't know where to go next. We'll help you at any point. I look forward to welcoming you, welcoming you into the Paul Mellon Centre at lunchtime and for the um, drinks reception tonight. Perhaps quite a few people in the room hadn't heard of the centre before the event. Don't worry, I won't ask for a show of hands. Um, and I just want to tell you a little bit more about the centre and our work. 
The Paul Mellon Centre for Studies in British Art is an educational charity committed to promoting original world-class research into the history of British art and architecture of all periods. We collaborate closely with the Yale Centre for British Art and a part of Yale University and I'm delighted to welcome colleagues from um, the Yale Centre for British Art to this event as well. At the PMC in London we have a rich library and archive collection. We have a twice yearly uh, grants and fellowships competition and we publish a book series with Yale University Press and co-publish with Yale Centre for British Art an open access digital journal. The open access nature of this publica publication reflects the wider ethos of the centre in London and our sister institution in Yale to interact with researchers around the world, to rethink and to interrogate British art and art in Britain, not as something set apart, but as part of entwined and complex cultural histories. This means, I think, confronting Britain's imperial and post-colonial histories through culture, a task which, again, I think is even more urgent in this present climate. As an institution, our research programme pivots around collaboration and dialogue, and we're very pleased to be working with a number of partners on this event, particularly Nada Raza and her colleagues at Tate Modern. An expression of this partnership will take place on Saturday, the 2nd of July, um, at 2 p.m., at a, pub a public panel discussion connected to the Bupankaka exhibition, which will take place in the Star Auditorium at Tate Modern. And if you haven't already had a ticket or bought a ticket for that event, please have a look on the Tate Modern website or talk to Nada, and um, you know, we'd love to see you there. That will be like the culminating event of, of the week. Um, and many of the speakers will take part in that. Gita Kapoor, Deepak Ananth, Sanal Kula and Karan Zitovitz. This event is also part of a longer term collaboration with the Asia Art Archive um, and Hamad Nassar. And I'm going to hand over to Hamad now to say more about the London Asia Project. Uh, thank you, Sarah. Uh, before I start with my little intro, um, I just wanted to mark um, the passing away yesterday of K.G. Subramaniam. Um, and we have amongst us one of his uh, students. So we thought uh, we'll ask Vivan, would, if you would, uh, Vivan Sundaram, to come and say a few words. Uh, it's a sad moment uh, to express the deep grief uh, that not only I, but hundreds and hundreds of students uh, that uh, K.G. Subramaniam, known as Manita, Mani Sir, uh, Mani Saab. Uh, 55 years ago, I joined Baroda, and he <coughs> was uh, head of the painting department. And I think from that day, uh, ever since, through many decades, he has supported not only individuals, but he's been an institution himself and always supported various institutional uh, 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 things that uh, I wanted to do, like the Amrita Shirgi retrospective, the Kasoli Art Center, and of course one went to uh, Mani Sir uh, to get his support and he would agree to be a chairman. What's remarkable, we were very fortunate, Geeta and I, uh, to meet him in December. And uh, he'd already had uh, earlier on an operation, but he was, uh, that was some time ago, but he was still so energetic. And uh, literally, there were six uh, of his paintings which he was working on. So his endless energy to work in a large mural, but also his mind, I mean, it's remarkable, we all know the amount of work he's written and I think that after his death this will grow and if I can end by saying that his teacher the great Nandalal Bose who he admired and spoke so much about and tried to dispel our notions that he was not just a revivalist uh, Bengal school artist but a much greater artist and it took some con uh, convincing of, uh, mm, of Subramaniam to explain the complexity of his art. And I think that after uh, uh, Nandalal Bose, certainly Subramaniam will be remembered as one of the greatest uh, artists, teacher, uh, and 
and creating many generations of artists who will deeply remember and not only mourn him, but will continue to uh, analyze and understand his work. Thank you, Vivian. Um, I'm Hamad Nasser. I'm the head of research and programs at Asiad Archive. And prior to this, with uh, Anita Daoud, uh, I co-founded and co-directed the London-based arts organization, Green <coughs> Cardamom. So in these two um, avatars, uh, it's great to see so many friends uh, that I've sort of uh, had encountered in one or both uh, of, of both capacities. And it's wonderful to also see new friends that hopefully we'll, uh, we'll be making over the next two days. Uh, welcome. Um, I'm going to sort of repeat the, uh, and not make the heroic assumption uh, that people have heard or, or know of Asiad Archive, so I'll give you a very brief intro. Um, Asiad Archive is an independent nonprofit that was set up in Hong Kong in the year 2000. And it was established really to try and catalyze new ideas that could enrich our understanding of the world through the collection, creation, and sharing of knowledge around recent art in Asia. Now we've done this over the last 15, 16 years through uh, one of the arguably most valuable collections of material, both primary and secondary, uh, which is freely available from uh, the library in Hong Kong and increasingly uh, online uh, from, from the website. Now what kind of content is that? Uh, it includes uh, personalized, uh, personal digital, uh, digitized archives of folks like Geeta Kapoor and Vivan Sundaram and indeed K.G. Subramanian. So people who open up uh, windows into vast vistas of a field and of a scene uh, and through which we hope uh, to fuel many different practices, uh, research, pedagogic, curatorial, artistic. So at AA, we like to think of ourselves as fuel for practice. Now this symposium continues uh, ongoing investigations, both for uh, the Paul Mellon Center and for Asiad Archive, into how we deal with exhibitions as subject of historical study. Uh, and indeed, our sort of collaboration was, uh, was seeded by, at another event that the Paul Mellon Center hosted as part of the uh, Association of Art Historians at a uh, meeting last year at East Anglia. And that was called British Art Through Its Exhibition Histories, uh, 1760 to Now. Uh, and they kindly invite, invited me to present a paper uh, which featured the other story. So it was, it was titled After Lives of the Other Story. And in that, it was making sort of basically two propositions. One, that Rashid Arain's polemic exhibition uh, is haunting British art history. Uh, and it asked whether institutional collecting can bust this ghost. Uh, and secondly, it, it argued that these British art histories are enmeshed with new art histories being constructed around figures such as Rashid himself, or Li Yuan Chia, or David Medalla, in places like Sharjah, Karachi, Taipei, Singapore, and Manila. And once those histories start circulating, what space do they leave for this expanded British art history that the Paul Mellon Center and, uh, wants to sort of invest in? What space is there for, the, for those to be written or overwritten about what circulates? It also echoed an earlier project where in response to the archives of the Royal Geographical Society, I propose that one of the problems uh, with the discourse around British identity, and it seems very opportune right now, is that it does not recognize it, its, its Indianness. Yes, you can be Welsh or Scottish or, or English, but you can't really be British if you don't recognize your Indian self, because there is a claim on Britain from its for, uh, former colonies, most significantly India. So these were the conversations that uh, Sarah and the team uh, at Paul Mellon Center were also interested uh, and invested in exploring. And we very quickly moved uh, through some very collegial and convivial lunches and dinners into a collaborative project that we've called London, Asia. Now, we were not aware that London, Europe uh, would not <laughs> exist anymore where, where London, Asia was born. Um, and this, this symposium 
is the first public event of a, uh, of a three-year collaborative project. And it posits London as this site where this enmeshed con uh, art history can be constructed. Uh, and we will sort of focus over these three years on four lines of inquiry around exhibitions, around institutions of patronage, writing, and art education. And this will be a platform, we hope, where both new initiatives can, can be born, but also we can shine sort of collective light uh, on, on existing efforts, on histories that have fallen out of circulation. And we're going to only do this uh, by evolving the project together in conversation with, with folks like you. So we, we look forward to doing that. Uh, and before I turn over to Sarah again to tell us, uh, to take, walk us through what these, these next two days will bring, I just want to sort of recognize that in anything, and I'm sure there are enough people here, in any organization where there are four co-conveners, there's always a first among equals. It's not me. Uh, and I'm sure it's, uh, you know, my sort of fellow co-conveners will agree uh, and recognize the, the, the effort of Sarah Turner. Sarah, thank you. Well, as you've heard already, I think um, the event really has come about through a real dynamic series of conversations. And I, I do want to say thank you to Devika as well for really pushing me to do this uh, event as well and thinking about um, a growing body of scholarship on exhibition histories and um, a, a group of scholars really kind of coming together. And we extended those conversations to our other uh, co-collaborators, as, as Hamad has, um, has indicated. And so you've got the programme for the next few days. You'll see that it's not, we, we've constructed something that isn't a marathon of paper after paper after paper. We have papers, response, discussion panel, so lots of different texture and rhythm uh, to this event. Using exhibitions not so much as a series of case studies, but as challenging and provocative sites physically, but also methodologically. And I think that's something we really want to get out of this conference, thinking about the exhibition as method, exhibition he histories as methodology um, as well. We're also thinking across uh, the 20th century and into the 21st century with the, the date range as well. And that's something we want to put out there as a kind of productive challenge to think about how we stretch across those date ranges as well. So we wanted to create this extended conversation through showing, telling, seeing, exhibiting South Asian in Britain, 1900 to now, and we don't have a predetermined set of answers or conclusions we want to reach. The organisers will lead a wrap-up session on Friday where we'll all contribute um, our thoughts on this topic, but I'm sure we're all eager to get the dialogue started, so I'm going to hand back over to Hamad to begin the first panel.